How's everybody doing? Thanks for making it down here. Okay, so Zach, thank you. Yeah, you guys are the best. Dude. You're patient. We're going to learn about measurement, measuring our campaigns. Uh, no question is a bad question. Just any questions you've had about measurement, anything that excites you, any platforms you're running that are maybe obscure or you're not sure, we are going to be talking about how we measure these campaigns we do. Now, I'm, I'm going to give you... I have some specific examples of something that I just ran that just wrapped up at the end of March. And so I just wanted to show you like basically the inner workings of that. And so we'll show you the landing pages. We'll show you how we track video embeds, like somebody who clicked on a video embed, whether that embedded video actually worked or not. We're going to talk about who, who viewed your pop-up mod, mo, what do you call them, modals, like a pop-up modal. We're going to talk about how do you track whether somebody submitted a button, just all kinds of things that you would normally do in a paid search campaign or a media campaign. Now, media is sort of a broad, it's a broad perspective. This particular campaign, the main form of media that we had was email. So email to a house list was the main way we got this thing going. Now, the reason why we did that, and as I'm sure you probably all know, is that a house list is like your most forgiving and your best litmus test for whether this thing is going to be effective or not. So if you have a list of people who are interested in what you have, you can test it out and see how they perform and see how they receive and then roll it out to people who don't know you. And you can see where the challenges are and you can work through things. Now, I would just recommend that to anybody who's running a campaign. You know, start with your, with your house list or people who you've already collected their email addresses or people who are friendly to you and have them go through it. You know, go through it yourself. Just go through this process as many times as you can and then start throwing the money at it. And, and obviously, for those of you, are you all paid media managers then? Do you, do you manage campaigns and manage paid media? Okay. And, and some, several of you have Google Tag Manager installed or are utilizing Google Tag Manager. Are you using? Uh, sorry, my English is not okay, so no. strong. Uh, I had some trouble because uh, I started to um, uh, use Google Tag Manager and I was already running from two yep. to yep. three years. And on this campaign, there was Google Tag Manager. Mm -hmm. um, I decided to pause the um, tracking code. Yep. The old Oh, I see. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Let's. Well, we can go through that case here, and we can talk about how to make sure that it's working. And I'm going to show you the tools that I use to to do debugging and to to make sure that it's working, and some cool you know tools that you might be able to use for your toolbox okay. too. Perfect. Excellent. So yeah, everybody's involved with paid media. Maybe you've done some email to launch campaigns, but basically what we have a series of things. We have an experience we need to be people to get through in order to buy from us or to do the next step. And a lot of our campaigns are, you know, broken down into steps. So you might do paid search to get a, just to get an email address or to get a lead or give them a, something to download, right? And then from there, it's like, okay, well, what's, what's our email nurturing sequence? How many emails do we need to send them in order to get through that process? And then from an email nurturing so sequence, how many people click through each one of those emails to get there, uh, to get through each step? How many people who receive these emails end up making the final purchase decision in the process? And I'm going to show you how we measure each of those steps. So it's going to be partly on the generation of the lead, but then this one also has an e-commerce component later on where it's there. Now, generally speaking, the more expensive a product, the more work you need to do to convert them, right? So if it's like a $1 product, you don't need to send out 50 emails in order to get somebody to, to buy something, it's like an easy decision. Either I spend the dollar or I don't. You get into the 500,000, you know, thousand plus dollars, it's a lot more work. And so generally your sequence of sale is longer, it's longer for how many hits you have. What would, what would be the, um, like a rule? Return about in this case? Just to this is a $2,000 product, yep. So the, the sale amount is $2,000. And so that's, that's really what this is, is at. Um, and, and actually the sequence is, yeah, it, it, it could be, it would be shorter for a short, for a easier to, to sell product. And actually I'm going to show you how I collected feedback that it was too expensive. So this is going to be completely transparent. I actually had a survey on there that said, what's your biggest problem from buying this right now? And they said, it's too expensive. And so then you can take that feedback and you can say, is this just somebody who wants to get a better price or is this reality of, of what and so um, I'm gonna, I have some slides here that sort of condenses this thing, but I think this is going to come to life a lot more once we get into the tools, once we actually log in. So that's, that's part of why we needed to use this computer. Any questions at this point? Are we cool? 